Setting up a PVC enclosure for your pet snake seems daunting. It seems difficult, it seems expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Today, let's go over how to set up a PVC enclosure on a budget for super cheap. My name's Adam, this is a PVC enclosure. You're watching Wicked to Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, thermostats and lights came in so we can continue this video. I'm not sure where we left off. I've just got a purple towel here to cut down on this ridiculous glare from the light. So if you're wondering, just, I like purple towels. Oh, before we move on, hit like, that'd be awesome. Appreciate that and subscribe, but also put in the comment section, guess how much of this whole thing cost me, including the enclosure and the substrate and the lights and the everything. How much did it cost me? Put in a comment down below. All right, let's move on. So first things first, you're gonna need a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna just kind of show you what I'm going to use here. Everything that is brand new, like the lights and the thermostat, those things, there's gonna be an affiliate code in the description box. So yeah, if you click them and you buy stuff, I do get a little cut, but it costs you nothing extra. These are the ones that I'm using. Something that I wanna make sure that you have is the lights and the thermostat. The reason that I'm wearing a different shirt than the beginning of this video, if I use the beginning of the other video, is because I started this project and realized that I had an empty thermostat box and an empty light box. I don't know why I did that. And anyway, so here we are a week later. Something else I forgot even now, which I just ordered on Amazon is get industrial strength Velcro. You're gonna need it to stick the thermostat on the side of the enclosure. Anyway, let's just get to it. The first step is to clean the enclosure. I didn't take any B-roll of me doing this because I mean, clean the enclosure. Use F10 or some veterinary grade sanitizer and just go to town. And you can use Windex on the outside of the glass, or the plexiglass, whatever it is that you have. And for a background story here, this is a four foot by two foot. That's the square footage on the bottom or the dimensions on the bottom. And it is 16 inches high. So I got this from Kijiji. It is a double door. So you can see this little partition in the middle here. There's two pieces of plexiglass, and it's just easier to access the snake, but it is one big compartment. After you've got it all cleaned out, especially if you bought it used, what you're gonna wanna do is put the lights in. Now, I would recommend putting the lights and the heat panel, if you're gonna use a heat panel, which is what I recommend for something like this that has deeper substrate, put those on before you have anything in it. Because I've put heat panels and I put lights in Upside down, it is a pain in the backside, I'll tell you. So have it empty, flip it on its side, and then go ahead and put the lights on. I'm using these Govi lights, there's two different types. These are the waterproof ones, which are less sticky, so make sure you use that alcohol swab that it comes with to make sure that there's no residue or anything, no dirt of the PVC enclosure. And once that's clean, then you can unwrap the entire thing. The thing I dislike about these Govi strips is just simply that, well, you have to unwrap the entire thing. It doesn't, the dongle doesn't connect. The dongle is hardwired into the lights, which means you have to run the entire light strip into the enclosure first, and then you're gonna go ahead and put it on there. And I guess I forgot a step. Drill yourself holes or one hole in the side, whatever side you want the electrical stuff to come out of. You're gonna have three different things going into the enclosure. The probe for the thermostat, the actual wire for the heat panel to go ahead and plug in and give it power, and the light strip. So what I do is I use a one inch bit and I just use a regular drill and I put in two holes side by side and then I just kind of like force it. Like I just keep the drill going and basically use it as kind of like a knife that's spinning, and I make a bigger hole, basically. You're gonna plug it up with cords, so don't worry, unless you have a baby snake, then it's not gonna be able to put its head through and get stuck. All right, so now you've got the lights inside. Start taking the adhesive back off as you go is my recommendation. I recommend you start on the back wall. So you go along the back wall, go up the one side, and then on the inside of these PVC enclosures, there's like a little groove. So I put the lights inside that groove so that it doesn't mess with the latching mechanisms. And then I just go uh, down to the side and almost a full, square, I guess, circle on the inside. And these ones here, if you use the link in the description, you can just cut them with scissors. There's marked sections where you cut. Make sure that they're turned off and not plugged in before you do that, of course. Next, you're gonna wanna do the heat panel. This one, for sure, do upside down. 
do not put everything in and then put the heat panel in. It is so much more difficult to do it like that. Instead, what I did, I put it upside down. And if you don't wanna ruin the table or surface or floor that it's on, use a two by four to prop up the one end because the screws are gonna go out a little bit, just a little tiny bit, the screws are gonna come out of the enclosure. So I put the two by four in, I propped it up. I put the heat panel where I want it. I'm using a 40 watt heat panel. It's a Vivarium electronics heat panel. They work great. Uh, you can use an 80 for something this high. If you're using a 24 inch enclosure, 24 inches high, for sure get the 80, but 40 works for this. I center it where I want it exactly. And then I start putting the screws in. The screws come in a little baggie inside the box with the heat panel, so no need for extra hardware. And then once those are in, I take these little um, plastic clip thingies. I'm pretty sure that's the medical term for them. Plastic clip thingies, the scientific term. And this is how you're gonna secure that wire that is going to be feeding power to your heat panel so it doesn't keep getting knocked out. If you have a snake, it's gonna knock it out. It will. So the best way to avoid that happening all the time is to have these drilled in place. So I stuck the power cord into that hole that we made in the side of the PVC enclosure and I plugged it in and then I just used these plastic thingamabobber things or whatever I called them and you screw those into the top so that it kind of makes it so that the snake can't pull it out of the back of the heat panel because they will pull it out otherwise and it is a kind of a pain in the butt to put back in when you're blind and upside down and anyway. Oh yeah, and if you have T-Rex arms like me, like super short arms, this is a difficult project. I recommend getting one of your taller friends with like regular people size arms, buy him some pizza or whatever he likes and then get them to do it like that because this is kind of a challenge if you're a T-Rex. All right, if you've done that, congratulations, you are done the most difficult part. This enclosure is now wired up, it's ready to go. All you have to do now is put the probe in for the thermostat. So you can do that now if you want, but now what you can do is you can take that thermostat out of the box. I just use one for like a seedling mat. Uh, for every one of these PVC enclosures, I use these iPower ones or the Vivo Sun ones. There's a link in the description again if you wanna use the same ones I use. I take industrial strength Velcro strips. I take that Velcro strip, I take the adhesive back off and I put it on the actual thermostat and then I take the adhesive back off the other side and I put it on the actual enclosure. And that way it's just stuck there and you can make your adjustments. So now you're wired up, you're ready to go. This enclosure has heat and it has light. So all you need to do now is furnish it to your liking. And what I recommend, especially from our humid species, things like ball pythons or rainbow boas, which is what this is. It's for a Colombian rainbow boa or Indonesian blue tongue skinks. I actually do the exact same thing for Irwin's enclosure. It was the first one of these videos I ever did. If you wanna watch that one, you can watch whatever corner the card pops up. So I recommend using a coconut husk. This is a brandless type thing. I got this from the reptile store, which they buy it from a wholesaler that sells to uh, hardware stores. So go to a garden center or a hardware store, make sure it's organic, uh, pesticide free, that type of thing and use it. Or you can use a coconut core or you can use like a name brand reptile one. It just saves you way more money if you use something that's not made for reptiles. Comes in a brick, you add water, you go ahead and expand it and then you just kind of mix it around with your hands, your T-Rex claws and then you throw it into the enclosure. I get it as deep as possible without it spilling out of the sides here. And then all you have to do is furnish it the way that you like it. And the way that I did it is I put in a few uh, hides. I think that's the most important thing besides the water bowl is put in hides so your animal feels secure. Um, all of these are secondhand. I got them when I bought other animals or enclosures. So. You can buy stuff like this on the internet or make your own. I have this turned over log. I think it's pretty dope. I put that in the side that without the heat because you want one on the cool side and the warm side and I always put one in the middle or several. And then I put this other one that actually came with my Dormals boa. I put that one on the heated side and then I just put in a couple pieces of two by four. Untreated two by four, you don't wanna use pressure treated because it has chemicals in it. So you use the untreated, which will eventually rot, but you'll get lots of use out of them. I lean those up against the walls to give it a little bit of climbing opportunity. If it's using a lot of climbing opportunity, I'll make much more elaborate structures for it to climb. This is just 
kind of to test how this animal is going to do. And if you do it like this and you prop up whatever climbing things that you're gonna give it, 100% you definitely for sure need to have it anchored in to the, the bottom somehow. So if you screw it in or if you just have like a rock, a very heavy piece of rock that is going to be sitting on it, cause you don't want them to be up climbing, pretending to be Spider-Man and then the thing fall over. It's not very heavy, but it still could hurt them, especially if it's a smaller, more fragile snake. And next, I just reused a bunch of plants from the dollar store, just fake plants, fake foliage. Is it perfect? No. Is it beautiful? No. Is it going to work? Absolutely. At the end of the day, what you put inside is up to you. As long as what you put inside, oh, I put a water bowl too. I think I forgot that part. As long as what you put inside is right for that snake. A Colombian rainbow boa is the example here. So I use a coconut product that is gonna hold humidity as a substrate. They need a humid climate in their enclosure. Once it's all set, take a step back, turn on the light and take a look at your handiwork. At the end of the day, this is for the animal first and you second. So as long as you're happy with the way it looks and the way that it looks is facilitating, facilitative, it works for the animal, that's all that matters. Oh yeah, and program your thermostat too, to whatever degree it needs to be. The probe, by the way, I get this question all the time. I put the probe inside the hide on the warm side so that I know exactly what the temperature is there. And then the rest, you can use a gun or you can use one of these, uh, I use a Govi hydrometer thermometer. You can use the code in the description or the link in the description. Again, affiliate link, but I swear by them. I was buying them way before. And by the way, Govi didn't sponsor this at all. I got no money for this. Those are just the products that I use. And the last part, the most fun part is to take your animal and put it inside the enclosure. This is what it's all about. The entire idea is to have the best enclosure for your reptile and looking at your reptile inside the enclosure, exploring and figuring it out. That's the most fun part. That's the most important part. And then you can change it up if you want to, but neither here nor there. This is Rainbro. This is the name, I was pulled out of the comment section. I forgot to take a screenshot of who picked the name, but I love it, Rainbro, and I'm gonna put him inside of this enclosure. And because they only get to about five feet long, he can probably stick in this enclosure for his entire life. In fact, if it is a male, it'll probably be a lot less than five feet. So this is a much larger enclosure than most people would recommend, but if you watch the channel, you know, because of videos like this one here, I much prefer larger enclosures than what are generally accepted and recommended in the hobby. So tell me what you think in the comment section below. Do you like this idea? Do you think that, well, I know I could have done a better job, but do you think that this is something that you might do eventually? And by the way, if you're looking for the overall cost, because I promised at the beginning I would show you the overall cost, this entire thing, I'll give you a second to guess in the description, the comment section rather. Put your comment down there. How much do you think it cost me? including the enclosure and everything. It was 300 bucks Canadian. And for a quick breakdown, I got a really good deal. I got this for 100 bucks, this enclosure off of Kijiji or Craigslist. The panel was another 120 bucks or something like that. And then the rest of it was just the thermostat and the lights. And everything else in the enclosure was secondhand that I already had. Other than the brick of substrate, which cost me 12 bucks, so all in all, it was about 300 bucks. And that's Canadian, by the way. If you're watching this from the UK or the US or somewhere in Europe, somewhere around the world, uh, our everything is inflated here, like ridiculously. So you could definitely do it for a lot cheaper. Okay, for real this time, that's it. Please hit like and subscribe. It costs you zero dollars. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna see stuff like this early, if you want extra videos, discounts on the merch, go ahead and sign up for Patreon. I appreciate you guys so much. For as little as $1 a month, you get all that and more and videos like this early, but the patrons, they got to see this a couple weeks ago. That's it. That's all. Hit like and subscribe because I do videos twice a week. That means that I'll see you on Monday.